why 1 Corinthians 15, which is Paul's account, goes back almost to Jesus himself. Right. What we have in Paul, and you mentioned in the last segment, when you're doing historiography, probably no principles are more important than early testimony and authoritative testimony. People who are in the right time and the right place to report what they report. And uh, 1 Corinthians 15 is arguably, I would say, the central text in present discussions uh, on these subjects. And the, and the reason is this. If we start with the cross at approximately 30 AD, if we call that ground zero, and before the Gospels, before the earliest Gospel, 1 Corinthians checks in at about 55 AD, plus or minus, whether conservative, whatever the writer, conservative, not conservative, we have 25 years. Now, I'll just stop right there and I'd say in ancient historiography, this is incredible. In a time when the best known biography of Alexander the Great, that of Plutarch, is almost 400 years after Plutarch, when we learn from the early Caesars, from Tacitus and Suetonius, and a good gap is 100 years, 25 is incredible. From a person, Paul, which you're going to look hard to find a critic who says that, that who doesn't admit that Paul believed he saw the risen Jesus. And here you have him writing this account and giving a report, which he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3, I'm passing on to you as a first importance that which I also received. Well, wait a minute. If the cross is ground zero and 1 Corinthians 15 is a mere 25 years later, Paul said in the first two verses of that chapter, he's writing it here, but he said, I proclaimed this to you when I came. When did he go to Corinth? A few years earlier, perhaps 51. Now we're at plus 21, but here's the key. Paul said, I gave you what I was given. And being an apostle, we have to at least give Paul credit, having done rabbinic research, at least he believes that these came from good sources. Well, in fact, contemporary scholarship, almost everyone who answers this question believes that Paul received this material, First, uh, actually Galatians 1.18, they believe that Paul received this material when he went to Jerusalem about five years after the cross. Some put it as early as three, like Gert Ludemann and as late as eight. That, that's the range. So average of about five years. And Paul does the math for you. Here's the cross. If he comes to Christ in his trip to Damascus, perhaps at plus two, three years later he's in Jerusalem, two plus three. Some might move it up or back. But he's in Jerusalem. He's with Peter and James. He spends 15 days with them. I love, I love C.H. Dodd's comment. They spent 15 days together. It's safe to say that they did more than talk about the weather. <laughs> in the context before and after, they're talking about the gospel. So, I mean, what else do they talk about? Paul said, I preach nothing but Christ and Him crucified, but that is the context in Galatians 1, both before that comment and beginning in Galatians 2. So he's there with Peter and James, and then he comes back in Galatians chapter 2. He makes a second trip to Jerusalem, and I think 2-2, two, two, Galatians 2-2 two, two is one of the most incredible verses in the entire New Testament. I set before them the gospel that I was preaching to see if I was running in vain. Now, vain, I mean, you know, check out 1 Corinthians 15 on what vain is. And he's going to subject his gospel to James, Peter, and now John is there. The biggest foursome in the early church, the most influential writers, check Tabor, the most influential men in the early church, they're there together. In Galatians 2, 6, they added nothing to me. Galatians 2, 9 and 10, where we get our little phrase, they gave us the right hand of fellowship. Now, if we can trust Paul, and Paul's the darling of critical scholarship, Paul lays before them the gospel, they added nothing to me, and they confirmed our message. Who? James, Peter, and John. Wait a minute. I thought we had a divergent tradition here, the James tradition, the Paul tradition. That runs roughshod over Galatians 1 and Galatians 2, unanimously ascribed to Paul at about 50 A.D., perhaps. One more thing. If he gets this in 50 A.D., uh, sorry, 35 A.D., that's simply when Paul received the material. If he got it from James and Peter, they had it before him. So you have Garrett Ludeman saying that this material dates from perhaps three years after the cross. You have the Jesus Seminar in their Acts of Jesus book saying by their vote that this Pauline material probably preceded Paul's conversion. So now you have it in that little tiny opening between the cross and Paul. And of late, one of the most influential, if not the most influential theologian right now, James D.G. Dunn, said in his recent book, Remembering Jesus, that this passage, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and following, wasn't just taught, it was, it was already stratified. It was already put into this creedal form 
within months of the crucifixion, says done. Now, we know Jesus dies in the spring. Within months, this is a 30 A.D. report, according to James Dunn. You know, if you're going to talk about second century things, talk about second century things. But I want to know how we're going to beat 